Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today we have another Photoshop quick tip for you. This time around, I want to show you a couple of tricks you can use to enhance the eyes of your subjects. This is really geared towards wildlife photography, but hey, I hear it can work on people too. Speaking of which, if you enjoy wildlife photography, make sure you check out my new ebook, Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography. It's jam packed with 290 pages of my best tips and advice for putting award winning shots on your memory card. Click the link below for more info and thanks in advance for checking that out. Now, let's go ahead and turn to the computer and I'll show you a couple tricks I do to make the eyes pop a little bit more. Okay, right here we have our first sample image and it's a deer out in a snowy meadow here. And I always like to have a nice catch light in an animal's eye. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a catch light going on here, but it's not real good. So what I'm gonna do is just use a simple curves layer here to enhance this catch light. So I'm just gonna drop a curves layer in right here and I'm just gonna bring this up. It's gonna make everything look really, really bright. And I'm gonna collapse that. And I'm just gonna hit Command I to invert that mask. Basically, we're hiding the effect. What we're gonna do next is grab the brush tool over here and just brush in the amount of effect that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead, let me zoom in here real quick. And we'll grab our brush tool. And I'm gonna use a relatively small, um, soft edged brush. I'm just gonna brush in here a little bit, these catch lights here. Now let's zoom back out because sometimes it's easier to look at this when they're zoomed out. This looks pretty darn good. Um, it might be a little bit too much. It's easy to overdo this. You just want a little bit of an enhancement. So I'm going to drag that opacity down to maybe 61% in this case. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. But there we go. We got a little bit better catch light. It's a very, very, very simple thing to do, but it does make a dramatic difference in the photo. Now, along these same lines, and we'll do it with this image right here, I'm gonna put another curves layer in here and just bring it up a little. I'm not gonna go as crazy as I did last time. And again, I'm gonna select the mask here and hit Command-I to invert it and hide the effect. And this time I'm gonna again select the brush tool and I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger this time. And I'm gonna go ahead and maybe set my opacity to say about 50% or so. If I can get it there. And I'm just gonna kind of brush in a little bit of brightness around her, the entire area of her face. Now, again, I'm gonna look at this and I think it's maybe too much. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit over here on my layer mask. But as you can see, it's made a pretty good difference. Uh, let's take a look at before and after. We have before and we have after. I like to bring a little br bit of brightness to the eyes and even to the areas around the eyes on the face because it draws your eye in. And again, let me give you one more before and after. Now let's take a look at another image. Okay, for our next sample, we have a great blue heron out here in a pond. And uh, as you can see, his eye is really dark and it actually doesn't have real good color either. So we're gonna fix both of those problems. Again, we're gonna start by uh, brightening up the eye. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna drop a curves layer in here and I'm gonna just kind of pull that up to real bright here. Again, it seems like you're gonna pull it too far, but go ahead and do that because we can adjust it. Now I'm gonna invert this layer by hitting Command-I, so it hides the effect. I'm gonna select my brush tool, make sure it's set to 100% opacity. And by the way, I failed to mention it earlier, but make sure you're using white for your foreground color, otherwise this isn't gonna work. Um, so anyhow, let's go back to the eye here. I have the brush size just the right size for the eye here. I'm just gonna paint right over that eye. There we go, make sure we got it real good there. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, we have a nice bright eye now. In fact, I think it's maybe a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna to go to my opacity, and I'm just gonna drop that down to something that looks a little more realistic and natural. Probably about 75% looks pretty good for right now. Now, the other problem I see here is his eye isn't as bright yellow as I would like it to be. Their eyes in the wild tend to be very bright yellow, and in this case, it looks a little bit dull. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a hue and saturation layer. And I'm just gonna crank up that saturation just like we did over with this other, uh, with our curves. And uh, again, it's gonna be too much, but we're gonna go ahead and hit Command-I for the layer mask there, hides everything. We're gonna grab our brush again, 100% opacity, white foreground color, and we're gonna go ahead and paint, making sure this is selected over here, our, uh, our mask, making sure that's selected. We're gonna go ahead and paint right on his eye here. And as you can see, it's too much. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. And it's really bright yellow. Some people might like that. I think it looks just a little bit unnatural there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my opacity on my layer here a little bit. So it looks a little bit more natural. That looks pretty good there, about 64%. Now, 
Again, we made two very, very small changes here, but watch when I go ahead and uh, get, show you a before and after. It makes a huge difference. You can really see that eye lighting up and it really brings the viewer right into that uh, right into that eye. And again, I want to emphasize that this isn't something that I do for every photo. These, you know, doesn't happen all the time, but every now and then, if an eye is a little bit dull, this works really well. Let me show you this one more time. I'm going to zoom in just to kind of show you the before and after here. And there's before, and there's after. That's it. Pretty simple. And although it may seem like a minor thing, it's little detail work like this that can really make a huge impact on the overall photo. Now, as always, feel free to share this video with anyone you know, and make sure you sign up for my email newsletter so you never miss a tip. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you check out that new ebook on my website. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.